Political Connections continues now with Political Times. Bay News 9 and our partners in the St. Petersburg Times Political Unit bring you thought-provoking interviews with newsmakers from the Bay Area and beyond. And welcome back, everybody. I'm Al Rochelle, as always, joined by St. Petersburg Times political editor Adam Smith, who will introduce our guest and ask their question. Adam, always good to see you. You too. We're lucky to have uh, Congressman Gus Bilirakis. Thanks a lot for being here. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. So a year uh, since Obama took office, President Obama took office, give me a broad assessment of how he's done. Well, I think it's been uh, very disappointing, uh, the lack of transparency. Uh, you see it. You're going to see it in this health care bill now because they're going to bypass conference. Uh, so Republicans will not have any input, uh, in, in, and that's unprecedented. He promised uh, that he would have transparency specifically uh, as to this health care bill, and C-SPAN has requested that they be in on the negotiations, and they've been shut out. So uh, a lack of bipartisanship. There are a lot of Republicans. Again, the health care bill, of course, there have been many issues. Uh, they, they can participate in this. There's a lot of experience there. Uh, and, and we've been totally shut out. So when Nancy Pelosi says this has been the most open and transparent uh, legislation that she has ever seen, what kind of line is that? Well, I, I don't believe that's correct at all. Uh, you know, I've been in Congress for three years now. I was in the legislature for eight. But uh, they've been, their rank and file members, Democrats complain about being shut out. So, you know. Mm -hmm. How they won't put us in, in those meetings if they don't put the rank and file members in. So the they meetings. don't take any Republican ideas? Period. They don't take any Republican ideas, period. So there's no, there's no been bending, uh, bending, exchanging, compromising, none of that? And, well, that's what happens when you're in the majority and you have so many seats. You have a 42 uh, seat advantage. Uh, they know they can get it through somehow. They have to twist some arms on their side, uh, make some deals, and some pretty bad deals. Uh, and uh, they've shut us out of the process. Hmm. Let's talk a little bit about national security. One of the uh, Obama had hoped to close Gitmo by the end of this month. That's not going to happen. Yeah. You just got back from there. I did. What did you learn? Well, I learned that uh, we should not close it. You know, I took that position prior, but uh, reaffirmed it. Uh, it's a state-of-the-art facility. Uh, three, Adam, in 2002, for three months, we were not ready to get those prisoners there. Uh, so it was not stated at the art at that particular time. And that's where the pictures were taken. See? So everybody thinks that the Gimpo could be a dungeon. Well, it's a state of the art. I was chairman of the uh, Crime Prevention Committee in Tallahassee in the legislature, and I toured many prisons. This is the best prison that I've seen. What kind of uh, conditions? The conditions are unbelievable. Too good, as far as I'm concerned. Flat screen TVs. Hmm. Uh, they have a choice of seven meals. These terrorists, uh, they play sports. If they're on good behavior, they can be outside 20 hours a day. It's unbelievable. It really is. We don't need to be transferring these prisoners to uh, countries like Yemen. Uh, they need to stay right there. We don't need them in the United States, and we shouldn't try them. Maybe they'd the be in States. worse conditions in uh, a cold federal prison in Illinois so, than in yeah, Cuba. And I think they know that. I think they know. Let's talk a little bit about the economy. The Obama administration uh, taking a lot of credit for the economy, at least not getting much worse. Mm -hmm. First year, as far as handling the economy, what kind of grade do you give the president? Oh, I've got to give him a very low grade uh, because, uh, you know, the unemployment rate has shot up. Uh, it's 12.5% in this area, 11% uh, in Florida uh, nationally. It's, uh, you know, we, we haven't done it. We've thrown money at the wall and hope that it, it would stick, for example, the stimulus package. It hasn't worked because it's not going to the right places. And it's not trickling down to the, the counties either. So, uh, and then what happens is we extend, not with my vote, but we extend the debt, the national ceiling, and then the next vote uh, will be on another stimulus package, $150 billion going to pork projects, not enough going to infrastructure, or transportation. So, uh, in my opinion, we spent a lot of money. We've mortgaged our, our grandchildren, uh, and it's going to be very difficult for them. Um, raise taxes, and uh, we haven't accomplished much. Now, the Democrats are saying, well, of course, a lot of this was passed at the end of the Bush administration and before Obama took over. So, there's still some of that, in, in their words, uh, this this baggage that goes along with it that they didn't control. Well, obviously, there were some mistakes made during the Bush administration. The first bailout was a mistake that I uh, voted against. 
but uh, it's been a year now, and they need to stop playing Bush. Mm-hmm. What do you say? Charlie Crist has famously gotten a lot of trouble for endorsing the stimulus package. He says that's what Florida needed, that uh, you'd see 20,000 school teachers in Florida without a job if, if that stimulus hadn't packaged. It hasn't. Uh, you know, Adam, uh, I saw on, on uh, President Obama's website that it's, we've spent $34 million in this area and created nine jobs. Now, I don't know if that's correct. I'm quoting from President Obama's website. That's not creating jobs. It has not been effective, in my opinion. I want to ask you uh, on that topic. Uh, are you uh, endorsing Chris or Rubio in that? I'm not. In, I don't plan to endorse. Why do you think Charlie Chris is in, seems to be in the political trouble he's in? Well, I think what Charlie Chris needs to do, Governor Chris needs to do, is speak to the people directly and take positions on these issues. Uh, and, and that's what I think they want to hear him do. Yeah. On another matter, do you think that the conservatives are sometimes overplaying their hand when they call Obama a socialist? Well, I think that there's too much government involvement, and we're spending too much money, and we're taxing people. So uh, it's it's a move towards socialism, in my opinion. I don't think they're overplaying their hand. And I, I, I think the Tea Party people, it's a terrific thing, because it's democracy and action. Uh, and, uh, and they're making their voices heard, and they're angry. Do you think Obama is getting bad advice from his people? Because a lot of people say that the first four years of the Bush administration were fine, but the last four years he got some advice he should not have listened to. What about the advice the president is getting? I think that he's getting some bad advice uh, from the, the Rahm Emanuel's of the world, uh, political advice. Uh, and uh, I think that we need to be listening uh, from a national sh- a security standpoint. This example is we need to be listening to our generals I just met with General Petraeus uh, at CENCOM, and we actually watched the speech, uh, Obama's speech on the uh, Christmas bomber together. Uh And uh, we need to give him uh, flexibility to do the job. Uh, And we need to be listening to the generals uh, and stop, uh, leave politics out of it. We need to think of our country first. A lot of people on the left were very upset with the president for wanting to send still more troops into Afghanistan. What did you think? Well, I commend him for, for sending more troops. I do not like the timetable, and I've talked to, to uh, you know, the military about this, uh, and I think we need to give the generals, uh, McChrystal and, uh, and uh, Petraeus, the flexibility they need to win. Okay. But I commend him for sending the troops. Let me ask you t- kind of a tough question. Let's say you had a magic wand, a magic pen. <laughs> if you could pass it over the Obama administration and change anything about the health care reform package that seems to be headed toward passage one way or another, what would you specifically change? Well, I would, we can't afford it. The seniors cannot, cannot afford this Medicare cut, okay? Uh, and uh, and it's, it's terrible, the Medicare Advantage uh, it's a wonderful program that mm-hmm. we're cutting. I know that Senator Nelson has exempted a few seniors in Florida, but everyone should be exempt from that. Uh, it, it, the, the quality of care will, will most likely go down. Uh, we can't be putting this burden on our small businesses. They're hurting as it is now, and uh, you know they'll be taxed because of this heavily. And uh, I just think what I would tell them to do is, is start from the scratch and include us in the conversation. Mm-hmm. What's Obama done right, do you think, if anything? Well, I think that uh, you know, he's, he, he speaks well um, you know, and, and connects. He's a good communicator, good communicator. And I think he means well. I just don't agree with him philosophically. Everything is being put off until like 2014 before we're actually going to see some yeah. of the benefits, and we're starting to pay for it, if you want to yeah. call it another yeah. phrase. That kind of philosophy gets us in trouble, but can the Republicans change things if the Republicans take the House coming up in the next election? It's very difficult, Al, because uh, you need the 60 votes. Right. So some of this stuff is irreversible. That's why we're fighting so hard to prevent it from happening. All right, Congressman Gus Bilirakis, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Thank you very much.